Hi guys, it's John from Android Addicts and this is an updated benchmark comparison test between the S22 Ultra and the S23 Ultra. So on the left we have this Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 and on the right the 8 Gen 2. So the 8 Gen 1 has finally had its May update, so we are a bit behind here, but we're going to run through the usual tests here and go through and see if there have been any improvements since last month. We'll start off with the Geekbench CPU test here, we'll move on to the compute, then we'll go over to the Antutu tests and then 3D Mark just to round it up. Okay, so that was the end of the CPU test and there's not much change at all really. Things have gone down a tiny bit on both phones, but uh, again, this is just a few percent here and there. So yeah, nothing really majorly different on the CPU test. Let's move on to the compute test now and see how they do there. Okay, so that's the end of the compute test. And again, there's not really much in it this month. Obviously the HN2 is still winning very comfortably here and it's actually running a couple of degrees cooler than the HN1. But uh, you can see from the averages, again, not much has changed at all. So let's move on to Antutu now. And you can see we are actually running a new version here, version 10.0.1-OB1. So let's see how this goes. And we can compare, obviously, to a previous month's result and see if they've improved at all. Okay, so the benchmark's just finished and uh, some interesting results here. We can't really compare them to last month's as the tests have changed so much. But what we can compare is obviously the final result here where the HN2 is beating 99% of users with 1.5 million compared to the HN1, which is still pretty good, but it does only defeat 37% of users with its 1.01 million. So massive difference there of nearly 500,000 points for the HN2. See here, HN1 up to 39, HN2 38, and we're at 85% battery here on the one and 88 on the two. So let's just do a quick stress test now. So we're gonna run a 15 minute test now and we'll just see how they look after that. I think there's been enough change in Antutu itself that this will be a fair enough test. 15 minutes of pure hammering of the CPU should be enough to get a good idea as to how they're both performing currently. Okay, so let's take a look at the stress test results here. We can see the 8 Gen 1 is doing not as good as you'd hope. You can see here for the majority of the test, it does dip down to 60% here, but I'd say on average, it's looking at around 70% for the majority of the test. The cores are jumping around all over the place as we've seen in the past, that's nothing new there. But uh, overall, I'd say probably a bit better than it was last month, but don't forget we are doing a 15 minute test now rather than a 45 minute test. Now, if we compare that to the 8 Gen 2 here, we can see this is a much better looking performance chart. We are getting, I'd say on average, around 80% for the majority of the test here. Just a few peaks up there to 100 and a little drop down to about 60 here. But yeah, overall, really nice result there for the 8 Gen 2 and the cores as well are pretty much locked to their respective values. So yeah, much better here on the 8 Gen 2 still. It did get a bit warmer here, but 42% compared to 40, sorry, 42 degrees compared to 40. But uh, yeah, I think I'd take those couple of extra degrees for this kind of performance versus the 8 Gen 1. So we're gonna move on to the 3D Mark test and see how they do here. There haven't been any updates for 3D Mark, so we can compare this fairly to last month's test. Okay, so the Wildlife Extreme's just finished and the scores have, on both have dropped quite a bit since last month. That could be because it's a bit warmer in the UK at the moment. You can see here the temperatures are 41 and 42. But yeah, we have dropped a fair amount since the April test and the stability has actually increased, but that's obviously because they're now running at a slightly slower speed 
because of the heat. So I'll move on to the slingshot and see how they perform there. Okay, so the slingshot's just finished, and you can see here, again, results aren't much to talk about. They're about the same as they were last month. A few pluses and minuses across the board. So yeah, the main difference we've seen is obviously in the Antutu benchmark result, with that 99% being beaten on the S23 Ultra. But that obviously is because it's a new type of test, so only time will tell now how well that will do in future updates. We have now got a benchmark though of that 1.5 million. So we'll just have to keep comparing it again when the next update comes out. So like I said, this is a bit of a late one. If this is annoying and you prefer just to see the S23 Ultra when it gets its update, I can do that on its own. But the S22 is obviously falling behind a bit now in Samsung's priorities. So it did only get its update about two days ago and I haven't had a chance to make the video until now. So yeah, let me know if that's what you'd prefer. I don't mind either way. Obviously, it's nice to have something to compare to, but we can always compare to last month's results if we want. So I hope this video was useful. If it was, please do like, subscribe. Don't forget to leave any comments you have down below, and I'll see you again in the next video.